All right. Hey, guys. Hey. Hi there. Okay, I have everybody muted. And if you want to unmute, then just go ahead and click it. I think I'm on mute, right? Yeah. Okay, there we go. We got you. Hi. It's hey. <laughs> How's it going? Good. How are you? Awesome. I hope everybody has been having a really good week. It's been a little crazy for me. What about you? Insane. But it's good. Busy is good, right? Yes. Without board, things would not be good. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I don't do well with board. <laughs> so I'm really excited to talk about open houses and I want to talk about really start to finish the marketing side of things, what to do when scheduling an open house, capturing leads, what to do with those leads and everything in between. How does that sound? Perfect. I'm excited. Okay. Awesome. I have a notes here. I like made notes before this. <laughs> Look at you being so proactive. I love it. So, and of course, everybody go ahead and type in any questions that you do have in the comment section. Stevie and I both put in our Instagram handles in the comments. So feel free to go on there and join, uh, follow both of us. And um, we're always putting out content for you guys. So. I'm yeah, excited. Instagram stories all day, right? Yes, that's right. <laughs> so let's start with setting up the open house and like really like start um, with like the beginning of the week and figuring out what open house specifically that you're going to host. Yeah. Um, my strategy with that is I am very strategic with the open houses that I choose to host along with, so I have a few different sorts of criteria with them. I try to set it up no later than Tuesday. I want to be as proactive as I can with the marketing side of things. And so I try to get it set up as early as possible so that I can get it into the MLS. I can run any sort of ads and I can do all of the different marketing. So, um, what I like to do is I like to look for those homes that are lower days on market so that I can make sure that I'm engaging with all of the buyers that haven't seen that property yet. I also play a factor in with the price range of it because I don't know about you, Stevie, but you know, in my market, $150,000, $200,000 homes, they're really hard to come by. Exactly. And so now I'm purposeful about the price range that I select. So I really try to focus on that, you know, $250,000, $300,000, $400,000 price range and focus on the buyers that I want to attract, right? And then figuring out, you know, probably in the three to 400 price range, they're probably going to have to have a home to sell too. And so having that in play um, and also with the area, making sure that it's an area that I want to farm and want to get in front of those buyers. What's your criteria with selecting open houses? So I typically, like you had mentioned, lower days on market. My goal is really the first two weekends. The point of me out there is, you know, it would be amazing to sell that house, but really you're trying to get those buyer leads, right? So the first two weekends are when you're going to get the most traffic or I will suggest, or the only other time I will do it is if it was, the price was recently reduced. Reduction. Yeah. I feel as though so many real estate agents feel so frustrated with open houses and I'll be like, let me see, where did you do an open house at? I'm like, that's been on the market for 90 days. Everyone's already seen it. A lot of new real estate agents are just so excited and they want to do an open house for anyone and everyone. And they sign up for these properties that are older. So definitely newer days on market and of course, um, higher price points. Right. Definitely. And if you know, like, okay, there's a lot of inventory in this area, it might be a great opportunity to host an open house at this property because there's three, four other homes for sale. So if this one doesn't work out for them, 
then I can come from value and let them know that I can also show them the other homes that are listed for sale in the same subdivision. So um, let's see, what else is something in the beginning? What do you bring to the open house? So do you want to talk about leading up to the open house and marketing? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, cause I wanted to talk a little bit about that because um, I feel that there's a big opportunity to get in front of the neighbors and just the subdivision as a whole. And so I want to talk a little bit about leading up to it and then let's dive into um, what to bring. So one of the things that I like to do and could be an option for you is circle prospecting. So we use a service Mojo. And if you go under the circle prospecting add on, you can add it on. I think it's like a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars, and you can literally map out the area and call through those neighbors. It will provide you with email addresses too, if you have email, um, if it has that information. And so, circle prospecting is one of them. Obviously, door knocking and inviting the neighbors to it. I usually suggest if the open house is on Saturday, then door knocking on Friday evening, and then depending on how many doors you got through, then maybe doing a few more before the open house. Um, do you run any sort of Facebook ads for your open houses? Yeah, so a couple of things that I'll do. I think open houses is a great way for you to leverage yourself and essentially brand yourself. So besides like trying to get those buyers, there's so many more ways to get leads. Um, this was definitely something that I did when I first got into real estate. I didn't really want to work with my sphere. Like a lot of people say, work your sphere. I Because I, they knew I was new and I just didn't feel comfortable yet. And I'd much rather meet people who didn't know me. So I leveraged myself like crazy. I did three open houses a weekend, two on Saturday, one on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I would use social media. So I was marketing myself on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, how I was doing this open house, these open houses over the weekend. And then my sphere and people on LinkedIn saw everything that I was still doing throughout the week, you know, floor duty, trainings, touring properties. And then they see you hustling on the weekend. They want to work with you. They want to work with people who are like that. And that's how I ended up ultimately getting my sphere. You really use open houses to leverage yourself. So I was, I do um, Facebook ads. I also post in all the Facebook groups, Swip swap groups are really popular here. I don't know if everyone has that. Um, and of course, posting on all the social media platforms. Also, I would email my leads if I, someone, if this property was like somewhat in their criteria, it was just a way for me to touch base with them and mention, hey, I'd love for you to come stop by. You know, we'll have food and drinks, all those things. A couple of things that you mentioned that I do as well um, is call into the neighborhood. It's a great way to get seller leads. Also door knocking, like you mentioned. I always get a photo out at the property um, at the open house, which I still do open houses. And if you follow me on Instagram, you see all the open houses and the photo of me there. Um, and then also creating a Facebook event before the open house. So that's just like a couple things beforehand, some marketing things that I do. Absolutely. I love those. And you mentioned a good one, um, the swap groups. Now, if I understand you correctly, it's like those Facebook groups that are um, maybe like Walnut Estates, HOA, yeah. or um, Fields, counties, certain cities, neighborhoods. Yep. Garage sale, um, you know, type of, you know, classifieds of Arlington, Texas or anything. Yeah, post it everywhere. Brand yeah. yourself absolutely everywhere. And what's cool about Facebook, because this wasn't an option on, like at the beginning, was you don't have to copy and paste it. As soon as you start a discussion, oh, yeah. you, you can post it to... I think it's up to 10 or 12 different classified groups that you're a part of on Facebook. And so take advantage of that leverage. Um, one of the other ones that you, oh no, what you had mentioned was, you know, hosting three open houses a week, weekend, which is absolutely insane. I love it. I was only there for two hours each one. Yep on Saturday, just two hours. And then on Sunday, I would do two, maybe three hours. 
yeah. but you know, it gets me in front of more people and it showcased to my sphere, like I'm doing three open houses a weekend. I would have rather be out potentially meeting people and leveraging myself on social media than just sitting at home. Right. That's definitely right. And if you think about it, if you are farming an area that has high activity, you hosting three open houses over a weekend's time, especially if you have branded open house signs, those neighbors are going to be like, dang, that girl is killing it. She is out here every single weekend. I have a question about the market. I'm going to go to her because she's the expert in my area. Yeah. I think uh, so many people say that um, open houses don't work, um, that they haven't had any success with them. And I just feel as though it's them who's not working. And they put out two signs, they sit at the house for a couple hours, and then they're disappointed. Right. So my goal is to always put out six directional signs at a minimum, depending on how many turns. Mm -hmm. However, I want, I want to make sure they are not missing it. And at the front of the house on the curb, you guys remember when like, it'd be like, uh, Amber's 16th birthday and there'd be like 16 flamingos in the front yard. Well, that's how I want my open house to look. I want it to just be decked out where they cannot miss it. I don't do balloons. I know some people do balloons. I don't, but I do have a flag that I carry in the trunk of my car where as long as the grass is moist and, and a little wet, um, and we're not going through like a dry heat here in Texas, I'll put that flag out because it really does just grab that attention. And like you said, doing a Facebook live video or showing like, to all of my sphere that I'm out here doing an open house. They're like, dang, that girl is out there. She's getting it done. She's got signs everywhere. It just speaks volume to your people. Yeah. So, okay. We talked about leading up to the open house. Now we're at the open house and we're prepping for it. What are some things that you're doing? Well, I will say, um, and this is just based off of, you know, what people have told me. And honestly, how I felt in the beginning was I was very nervous mm -hmm. to do an open house. I'm a new agent. Are they going to ask me questions that I don't know? And what has helped me is knowing my numbers, knowing that property. So with most houses, the homeowner is providing a seller's disclosure. So ask that, you know, if this isn't your listing, ask the listing agent, do you have a seller's disclosure if it's not in the MLS? And educate yourself on how old the roof is, the AC, if it's an older house, electrical, plumbing, anything that's on there, because people are going to ask you these questions. And if you are knowledgeable and you know your numbers, the market stats, our association breaks out the stats every single month. If you're able to pull out these stats and, you know, let's say the house has been on the market for 70 days and you're like, well, average days in this area is a little bit more, whatever the case is, use these numbers as your advantage. Um, also like the neighborhood stats, schools in the area, local places, because some people are just in town for the weekend. They might not know the area. And um, I would just make sure that, Look at the seller's disclosure, know the stats on the house, know the stats on in the area so that you'll feel so much more confident. And when people ask you these questions, you're going to be like on the ball, right? Exactly. I love those ideas. And I definitely do the same. I like to print out the comps and really just like a quick CMA. I'm not trying to go into too much detail because yeah. if they want to book a private appointment with me afterwards, that's when I want to really showcase my knowledge um, what the market is doing on a more in-depth um, level. Also, what I like to do is I like to print out other active homes nearby. So I'll make a really nice flyer that has a photo of the home. I'll have a little bit of details like bedrooms, baths, and I make the prices higher than the house that I'm hosting open and lower. Because on average, buyers are out looking at open houses for usually more than they can afford. And so I want to be able to provide stats um, of the active homes because a lot of people think you're only showing that home that you have listed because it's your listing. And they don't realize that you can show them everything that's on the market. And so I'll give that to them 
Um, but I'm not disclosing the property address. They got to come to me for that information. I'm not trying to show them all of my cards, right? I want them to come to me and ask those questions. And so um, I do that for solds, a quick CMA, and then I do it for actives to let them know that there's other options out there should this one not fit their needs. One of the other items that I like to bring to is I like to bring a photo frame and place them throughout the house, in the kitchen, in the master bathroom. And I like to put on there, would you like to save $4,500 in closing costs or ask me about special financing? So Keller Williams, of course, we have Keller Mortgage, but guys, I'm sure your local lender has get a free appraisal, you know, ask about a free home warranty when you purchase this home. You know what I mean? Like, there's so many different ways to grab their attention and put that throughout the home so that they're coming up and asking me for that information. I like that. And of course, sign in sheets. So on my sign in sheets, I am asking the question, name, number, email, right? I'm asking how long they have been looking for a home or their time frame to purchase a home. So I have three options for them to circle. And it is um, one to three months, three to six months, or six plus months. And then I also asked, do you have a home to sell? And if they're working with an agent, the agent's contact information. Because you would be so surprised how many people say, yep, I already got an agent. And you say, oh, great, who are you working with? And it catches them totally off guard. And they're like, um... John, <laughs> like, okay, well, um, I'll be sure to let John know that you stopped by. You know, I just hit it from that angle. Um, but usually they, if they're working with an agent, they know their agent's contact information. Yeah. So I will share what I do at the open house that I think might be beneficial for people is when people are walking in. So real estate agents are compared to car sales people, right? They can be really intimidated and they're coming to this open house and they might really just be looking. They might be so far out. They just happen to see my sign. They want to come in and sometimes they don't really want to talk to me. I don't know if it's for you, but yeah. I feel like sometimes and this is what I just love about open houses. People walk in, I can feel their guard so high up. And my goal is I'm like, they are going to leave my friend. So when they come in, it's kind of like what I mentioned about the listing presentation and when we're doing the tour is I'm just trying to engage with them, relate with them in some sense and get to know them and let, show them that I'm not salesy at all. And I just want to help them. So when they come in, I'm not even trying to be like, welcome to the open house. It's a three bedroom, two bath, yada, yada. I'm like, hey, how's your day going? Isn't the weather so nice? Are you looking at other open houses today? Like not even talking about real estate. If they've got kids, that's perfect. Little girl has a cute dress on. I'm like, I love that dress. Just trying to get them to relax and be able to trust me. So when they come in, I feel like you have to gauge people. Some people need to be guided and they want you to do a tour. I've noticed, you know, like if it's um, occupied and people's furniture is all everywhere and stuff, they feel intimidated. Like if someone lives here, is this okay? You know what I mean? And I'm always like, no, open up whatever, look at anything. Um, so sometimes I will actually give them a tour but sometimes I can tell when they want to do their own thing and I let them and I have my laptop and I make sure that they see like, okay, I'm letting you do your thing and I'm going to be here working because I've been to um, listing appoint or appointments before where the other agent was there and she would just like sit there like just waiting on us, staring at us while we're like, you know, looking at things. It's really uncomfortable. So, and I don't know, in my opinion, I don't think that you should do that. So I act busy. If, they, if I can tell they don't want me, you know, walking with them, I will be busy on my, um, on my computer, right? So either it just depends. You've got to gauge them. But something that I do that I just feel like is my selling point is 
when they come over, which I'm going to talk to you about everything that I bring to the open house and my whole setup. But one of them is my buyer guide. And if they mention that they're not working with a real estate agent, and even sometimes when they have, I've gotten people who've said that they have and they've ended up wanting to work. Oh, our real estate agent didn't give us anything like this. Mm -hmm. But what I'll say is, because a lot of times it's first time home buyers, and I will say, hey, you know, do you need closing costs covered? This is when I'll bring up, you know, real estate is, do you need closing costs covered? A lot of times they don't even know what closing costs are or how right. much it is. So that's where I can show up and provide value for that. So then I break out the guide, I show them how this upfront cost page and I'm like, okay, well, based off of the um, price of this property, you know, this is about $8,000, but I showcase to them but I can negotiate, help negotiate that and have the seller pay your costs or half the cost. I've even had people pay $1,000. And then the only other thing I will mention is we'll talk about that and then they're like, wow, I had no idea about that. So they see value in me, right? And then I might say, you know, do you need a home warranty also? Because, and then I'll explain a home warranty and how we can ask the seller to pay that for them. So that's like my selling points and how I really get them. And I'm like, look, I'm gonna give you this guide. You can take this home, take it with you. They're really impressed by it. And that's where I feel like is where I can grab them. You know what I mean? Definitely. It's coming from contribution and adding that extra added value. You know, just like you said, you and I talk about all the time, it's asking questions out of a sense of caring, you know? Yeah. And so it really is, oh, I want to help you purchase this home or whichever one you fall in love with. Here's the process to do that. And they're so shocked. And so I have something similar to, uh, to your buyer's guide as well, where it's just, yeah, well, with this property, you're looking at this, this, and this, and they have no idea. They're blown away. They don't even know when you say the term inspection, option, you know, appraisal, closing costs, they have zero idea. And so it's bringing those items up to them and asking the right conversations and helping them understand because a lot of them don't realize that, oh, you just put an offer in and then we close. Right. <laughs> So, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Girl, right? <laughs> so, I love that. And the fact that you bring the buyer's guide to the open house and give that to them. So, I will say, I know you touch base on the sign in sheet. Um, and with my setup, I do have a sign in sheet there. And I just, with my personality, I just don't feel comfortable being like, okay, I need you to sign in. Can you sign in for the seller? Yada, yada. This is how I do it is this is why I have, which I'll mention everything that I have laid out, you know, like on the Island. And if you follow me on Instagram, everybody has seen this, but I kind of entice them to go over to that Island. Like they want to see what all do I have over there? One right. of them being food, right? Well, guess where my sign-in sheet is? Right next to the food. So when they go to grab the donut or, you know, like all these places got like crazy cupcakes and donuts now, like they look so delicious. They go to grab for it. And that's when I feel comfortable. Like, okay, I'm giving them something. Hey, do you mind signing in? Like literally their hand is right there. And it's like, you're going to take my cupcake and my donut and say no? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so that's how I feel comfortable. It was such a struggle for me for so long to be like, to ask them to sign in. I was, I don't know. I was intimidated, nervous. Sometimes people would say no, but that cupcake donut trick, I feel comfortable because I'm giving them something and they're like, okay, yeah, you know, or no, I'm going to take your donut. I'm not signing in. What? Like you'd be, able to be a real jerk. Right. And one of the things that I do, I love that, by the way, that is hilarious. But one of the things that I love to do is while they're signing in, I ask them, are you out looking at open houses today? Yes. Always. And, ask that. and, and they're always like, yeah, it's a great day. You know, um, we just dropped our, I had one where the neighbor had a birthday party for their kid and all the parents that dropped their kids off to the birthday party 
came to the open house. I was like, jackpot. I need to strategically do this every single time now. But when they're signing in, I say, oh, okay, great. Well, that's really, that's really awesome that you're looking at open houses this weekend. My app will actually tell you all of the open houses going on in the area for whatever day you select. So let me go ahead and text it to you real quick. And while they're signing in, they're giving me my phone number mm -hmm. and I can verify that it's a great phone number. And so you'll hear their phone ding as soon as I send it off. And they're like, oh, got it. I'm going to download it now and we're going to go out and check out whatever uh, other open houses are going on. Yeah. And so it's really cool because then you're like, okay, they're not giving me a bogus number because that's what I was experiencing when I was first doing open houses. And I said, how can I get over this? I want to make sure that I'm getting the right numbers and that this isn't a total waste. And so getting that phone number and hearing their phone ding and go off immediately, it's everything. Yeah. So um, at the open house, this setup that I have is um, – Definitely like to have a nice flyer, and I think it makes it look nice. I use like a clear stand, and I'll put the flyer in the stand, and I also have like extras there for for them to grab. Um, I really like the property feature sheet, which I use for my. I was mentioning this during the listing presentation, and I'll have the property feature sheet out as well which we talked about last time what that was. I have um, cookies with my logo on it. So just, you know, branding. And um, right now I have the football magnets laid out there. Um, my business cards, my buyer guide, food and waters. And I feel like it's a lot of things on the table, right? So they see all these different things. It's branded, has all my information, has all the same photo on everything. They've got my buyer guide. I feel like it looks like I've got it together. Whereas if you just have a flyer, you're just like, oh, you just printed this off two seconds, but it looks like, you know, I put in real effort for this. I definitely put out a as many signs as possible. I always ask everybody how to hear about the open house. And most yeah. of the time it's because of the signs. So there's just so many different steps with open houses. It's not just putting out two signs, putting it on the MLS. Like you really have to work and put in the effort if you want the results. You know, there's just so many things that we suggested. Um, and then I do like to have balloons at the house. Um, and so yeah, that's just like- do you do balloons. Do you do a big banner flag? I do not. I okay. Should. So, well, I think you do balloons to get attention. I do the big yeah. banner flag to get attention. Either way, yeah. it's something other than the signs that, you know, should it be in the middle of a street, right? And we're, we're doing that to simply grab attention. Yeah. So I don't think that there's a right or wrong way, right? I just think that it's whatever you can do to continuously just get their attention. And plus, it gets the attention of all the other homeowners. They see a real estate agent putting out all these signs. They got to drive in and out of their house. You're going to grab people, you know, during those couple of hours when your signs are out there. They see signs. They see a big flag. They see balloons. They, they, you had called them. You had door knocked them. They saw your Facebook ad. Like, That's look at right. these branding tactics that you have right there. For sure. And if you get in with the HOA, whether it's the president, um, the vice president, whoever, or if there's a community pool. Um, so a couple of things with that with HOAs. I don't know if HOAs are big where you're at, but they're huge here. And so when I reach out to the HOA president, they email blasted out to everybody. And before I know it, I have everybody on the HOA board that's down at the open house. Nice. That and, is awesome. and they do like Facebook groups and things like that. Yeah. Um, also with the HOA during the summer, if the HOA has the community pool, Make sure even if the property is, you know, a few streets away from the community pool, putting an open house sign there at the community pool because you would not believe how many people walk to the pool or drive to the pool and they say, okay, well, before we go home, let's 
make a pit stop here at this open house first. Even if it's directional signs or if it's just an open house sign that says open house one to three at 123 Main Street, the neighbors know where that's at if they're going to the community pool. Same thing with the golf course or anything like that. And also one thing to add, so um, if the community does have a gate, make sure you're doing your homework on the community before you sign up for that open house. So if it is a gated community, getting in contact with the listing agent or the HOA themselves to make sure that that gate is going to be open, coming prepared with a sheet that says, to attend the open house, text me at blah, 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 blah for the gate code. Because, I mean, we're all human. The HOA president or somebody might forget that to keep the gate open. And so they're like, no, we're not keeping it open. <laughs> yeah, or we're not keeping it open. Or, you know, it's just a boom in open house. And there's, yeah, you know, it ends up closing at 3 o'clock. And you have people there until 3, 30, 4 o'clock. I've even done in the MLS, when you um, put the open house, right, call for gate code, I'll make sure, like, if it's my listing, because you can edit your listing on Zillow, and I'll make it in the first line, call for gate code for the open house, X date, you know? And then just like I said with the app, to confirm that I'm getting their number, same thing. Yeah. So that's great. I love that idea. So I was going to share this story. So I went to this open house this weekend that this other real estate agent had done and you wouldn't believe it. Oh gosh. Okay. So um, I had scheduled these showings and for one of the showings they had mentioned, Oh, there's an open house at that time. So, you know, you'll just be going to the open house. I was like, okay, great. And I was even telling the customer, I was like, I'm so excited to go to this open house because I don't think I've ever gone to um, another open house that a real estate agent has done. So can you all still see me? Yes. Oh, I X out of the screen somehow. How do I get back? <laughs> oh, shoot. Oh, I think I got to join again or something. Um, dang, it was like right in the middle of my story. I think it's launching. Okay. So we go into the open house and the real estate agent um, came over and she had this super low monotone voice, she wasn't very excited to see us. And um, I don't even think she had told us her name, but I looked her up online later and she was the listing agent. So anyways, I went and, okay, now I'm back. I'm like talking to myself over here. That was awkward. <laughs> Okay, so she, I don't think she introduced herself, and um, I'm chit-chatting with her, and she was just, like, very short, and was like, okay, I'll let y'all do your thing, and I'll just be sitting here reading my magazines, and I was like, okay, so it's just very short, like, didn't even introduce herself, didn't seem excited to see us, and was like, I'm just gonna read my magazine, go ahead, so I'm like, oh, okay, so we walk around, there's no setup. This is a $900,000 property. Oh there was a water. I was like, mind blown. So we walk through, we do a whole tour of the place. She's reading her magazine and we come back and my customer asked the woman a couple questions about the property. And I was just shocked by her answers. It wasn't like she had bad answers. It was just, she was not selling that place. Not selling the house. At all. And so we were like, all right, okay. My customer didn't like it. And we left and I was like, I can't even believe that she got that listing. How did she get that listing? She didn't even introduce herself. She just was like, all right, I'm gonna sit here, read my magazine. And there was no setup, no flyer, no business card. We did a tour, she didn't even sell the place. And it was a $900,000 property. And my customer was like, if I was that listing agent, I would have been pissed. Like, what? Yeah. So crazy. So in my opinion, I don't think that you should do that. And she had one sign just in front of the house. That's awful. So Stevie, you know what that means. Keep an eye on it over the next six months for it to expire. <laughs> right? <laughs> I cannot even, I was like, my mind was blown. I was like, I cannot even 
believe that. And I was kind of thinking, oh, I bet this is going to be a really nice open house. And if I was doing an open house on a $900,000 property, I'm bringing out all the bells and whistles. Yeah, that's right. For sure. <laughs> Crazy. So I thought I would share that with you since that was today's topic. Yeah, no, that's, I don't want to say awesome, but I mean, that is. That's for the summer. Poor, yeah. Like, well, wow. You know what that means. She needs to join you <laughs> for some mentorship. All right, come on, girl. <laughs> so now let's talk about once we're there at the open house, we're wrapping up everything. Um, I want to talk about the follow-up system afterwards because I feel that a lot of agents have missed opportunities once they built this great rapport with the, the people that had came in, the potential buyers. They got their contact information from the sign-up sheets and then they do nothing with it. So let's talk a little bit about the um, follow-up for afterwards. So what I like to do as soon as the open house ends is go through and text everybody. This is Amanda with Keller Williams Realty. Thank you so much for stopping at the open house, 123 Main Street. We had a great turnout. Did you have any further questions for me? And so they'll usually respond back like, no, I didn't, or, you know, um, we weren't interested in that property, whatever it is. And then I'm asking, great, did you happen to stop by any other open houses today? And then they're gonna probably say, yeah, we went to the one down the street. Awesome, well, I'm able to open up the doors to any other properties that you might find interest in. Are there any that you'd like to view this evening? And so again, just bringing that value to them and getting back in front of them again. So I'd like to follow up with the text as soon as the open house ends, even if that's, you know, the last 10 minutes that it's winding down, or if it's a vacant property, just spending that, um, you know, 10, 15 minutes, just shooting a message over and thanking them or doing it in a video message being able to just record myself and say, thank you so much for stopping by. It was so nice meeting you. I couldn't believe the turnout that we had. I'm really looking forward to us connecting again. Let me know on a scale of one to 10, what was the interest that you had in the home? And a question as simple as that allows them to just say, an eight, it wasn't you know, the exact floor plan, but we have some interest or a one, it wasn't at all what we were looking for. Mm -hmm. Um, also going through circle prospecting and door knocking them and letting the neighbors know the outcome that we had. Hey, we missed you at today's open house. We had nine individuals that had came through. One is really interested. So that means there's eight other buyers that will be looking for a home since this one can only be sold to one person. Have you thought about selling your home by chance or do you know of any neighbor that has? That is really good. And so letting them know like, hey, there's a high interest of buyers here in this neighborhood. Are you trying to capitalize on the equity that you have in this home? If so, now's the time to do that. Let's set up a time to talk. Um, like that's so easy. Right. I mean, we're talking, especially with fall and the weather cooling off a little bit, getting out there and getting your cardio on, you know, it's just staying in front of them again. So they've seen your signs, they've seen your face, you've called them already. So it's just consist and consistently staying in front of them. And then of course, every single person goes into my Boomtown CRM and they're put on a uh, open house drip campaign, which is something that I put together. It incorporates emails, reminders for me to call them, and then also auto-generated text messages to them too. Yeah, I love it. I think those are all such great points. And there's just so many ways to get business from open houses besides just sitting out there. You know what I mean? For two hours. There's just so many ways. I always um, send a video reply. And then I like to um, make a follow-up plan to where on Monday, I will reach out to them and say, did you have an opportunity to look over my buyer's guide? Did you have any questions or did you want to meet up so I could go over in person with you about it? 
just trying to provide value to them. And then I always add them to my drip campaign for open houses. I have Boomtown as well. And then now you saw that I'm working on those videos. So yeah, I'm just gonna add, I'm gonna have everyone on the same thing. Everyone's gonna be set up on this drip campaign to learn about the home buying process. And my videos have been like three to five minutes, like short and sweet. I love that. You know, I gave you feedback and said, oh my gosh, CV, this series idea that you have is brilliant. And so being able, and I love the fact that like you and I are starting our YouTube channels, right? Mm -hmm. And so putting it in, letting it live there so that not only your open house people, but yeah. all of the buyers that you come in contact with, putting them up on a drip campaign where those series are consistently staying in front of them and they're supplement to what you're currently doing and providing value, whether it's stats, the buyer's guide, all of the things to make you top of mind. Yeah. And then with the videos, you can add them on YouTube, use their hashtag thing that they got set up. So if people are searching like how to get pre-approved or Jacksonville real estate, like all these things, it's just another way for me to pop up. Or if someone Googles me, these YouTube videos will pop up. So there's just so many different ways to leverage this. Yeah, I love it. And you know what's so funny is we have a brand new listing that's on the market um, just the other day. Beautiful home that will definitely sell very quickly. And so I'll be hosting an open house on it tomorrow. So I'll be sure to post it all on my story so that you guys can actually follow like the behind the scenes things to running a successful open house. Yeah, that's interesting. So you're doing it during the week. I've never done that. Oh, okay. So real quick, because I know we try to keep these 30 minutes. So I'll, I'll wrap it up with this really quickly. So I find in October, everybody's weekends are jam packed. Everybody's going to pumpkin patches. They're going to the corn mazes. You know, they're doing pumpkin carving with their friends. I don't know about you guys, but homecoming. It's like a big thing here in Texas. I know it's a big thing all over the place, but like Texas football is like Jesus. Like it's like everything. <laughs> and so everybody's weekends are packed with those activities. Yeah. And so I do open houses on, during the week. So usually like a Wednesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, something like that, especially if you're near a school do it Thursday or Friday before the football game so that you're driving in those parents that are going to be going to the school into the stadium. Yeah. Um, so yes, I do them on the weekdays, especially in October. And I find it to be, you know, pretty successful. So I'll let you know how tomorrow's goes. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And um, tip number two on that really quickly is, especially if your area is like here, again, football is everything. So Cowboys, like we eat, sleep, breathe Cowboys football. And so I do not host an open house on Sundays. Oh yeah. This upcoming weekend might be an exception because we do have a bye week. However, Cowboys games are always on my calendar because I know that it's just, it's not going to happen between the Texas State Fair, which is like huge, and then Cowboys games. So yeah, making sure that you're planning your open houses around events going on with schools, within the community, within the city, um, your college football, your pro football, all of those things, if that's a big deal in your area, because it is here for me. Yeah, it makes sense. Well, cool. I'm so glad that we talked about open houses today. Hopefully it was beneficial. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. As always, we, oh, hold on. There is a question. What time is good for open houses? So what time do you do your weekend open houses, Stevie? Um, usually 11 to 1. Awesome. I know 1 to 3, 2 to 4 are always good times too, just kind of depending um, like throughout the summer, I agree, like 11 to 1, especially when people are out garage sailing, mm -hmm. get in front of them when they're in the area, especially if they're visiting the area. And then throughout the weekdays, I do like 4 to 6, 5 to 7. Again, just strategically plan it on what's going on in the community. Mm -hmm. So 
Well, we always love to hear your guys' feedback. So make sure that you're following both of us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. We're trying to put as much content out there as possible because, you know, we love inspiring other agents and being inspired by each other and other agents too. So let me know what you guys have and what topics we should do for next week's mastermind. Okay. Bye. All right, guys. Have a great rest of your week.